Testing, testing, one, two, three. Let's check this out. All right. Welcome, 9 a.m. I walked outside to drop off the kids and I saw that my car has been crashed into. Right in the bumper. I checked my ring phone, my, my ring cameras and everything and it didn't show it. But it shows a lot of people walking across the streets and stuff. I gotta, I gotta contact ring. I gotta contact. But luckily there was somebody who wrote a note that said, hey, um, I, uh, I crashed into your car. Please give me a call. So I am thankful for that. But, you know, in the meantime, let's, uh, let's do one of these, um, let's get to drawing. All right. So what I have here is, uh, another wheel for me to decide. And what I did this time, it's more like shots. Like I have a profile tracking shot. These are just different shots that I will draw. And then maybe it'll create a story or something. But if, uh, if y'all have any shot ideas, let me know. All right, let's do this. Extreme close-up of eyes smiling in anger. Try that out. Mm. Before I get into this. Let me, uh, let me just explain something. Okay. So let me explain a little bit of something called a shot list. Um, what a shot list is, is basically, usually a DP would do this with, um, with the director. And that's basically just going through the script and listing out what they need, um, or the size of the shot, the angle of the shot, uh, the type of camera movement, and the the blocking, the character blocking, like what, what's happening in the frame. And I, I like doing this thing called the reverse shot list, which is something I'll go over soon. But first off, um, uh, let me just write down what we're drawing. We're drawing a ECU... Um, angry eyes smiling it's kind of like that greed one that we did the other day so what I, I learned this how to do the shot listing from this book called From Word to Image by Marcy Belliter Belliter, Belliter? and I learned this like a long time ago. It was great. Um, but basically she breaks it down like this. You have text, you have image, you have diagrams. So text is like your scripts. Text is also, and then the image is like the drawing. And diagrams are like overheads. And, um, but also within the text, you have shot lists. Now, the way that I like to work is I like to, um, wait a minute. How come I can't get my chat up? Oh, it's fine. Hey, Andrew, what's up, man? Welcome. You never sent me that interview, dude. Or, I mean, that interview, your, your portfolio. Um, send it on over when you get a chance. Um, would love to see 
um, and I'll point you in a direction unless you already have direction no worries uh, but anyway so we're talking about shot lists what I like to do with shot lists is um, basically break down the script in images like it's basically like my list my little laundry list of what I need to draw I always compare it to going grocery shopping. It's like if you have a list of what you want to buy at the grocery store, you'll you'll get there quick. You'll you'll go there, you'll go produce, carbs, protein, boom 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 boom, and you're out of there without buying anything extra. And have you ever been to a grocery store without a list? I mean, I have, my goodness, I just buy like everything I buy chips I buy soda I buy water I buy um, a magazine you know maybe I'll buy some bacon so you don't really have a direction on on what to choose so what helps me with shot lists if the director or the per or if the director or the DP doesn't have one yet I'll go ahead and create one and it just helps streamline the process So, back to Marcy Begleader. Um, so, when we go to do a shot list, you have scale. You have angle. You have camera movement. Blocking. So from here, scale is the size of the subject in your frame. Here's your frame. Size. So let's say if we're doing a extreme close-up of angry eyes smiling. Well, it's an extreme close-up. You have... Um, well, here, before we get into what extreme close-up is, we'll go to, we have close-up, medium, wide. Now, um, these are all pretty subjective, but a close-up. something about like that a medium it's more like this and then a wide let me say a wide is like this but then you have all these inner, inner, um, I don't know how you call it. You have these uh, in-betweens. So you have a medium wide. So let's say. Let's say our medium wide shot. that again it just depends on the the director you work with it's subjective and then this is a medium wide and then there's all these other gradations where you have like a cowboy shot also called an American shot and that's usually let's say here, let's go back to the proportions. Maybe this will be easier. Halfway, quarter, eighths.
So you have your close-up shot, which is about right here. You have your T up, which is uh, not politically correct, where it's like tits up right here, or they call it 2T shot. And then you have your medium, which is about like right here. Here, let's do it more like this so I have an aspect ratio. We'll do it 16 by 9. Stroke. Boom. So there's that. And then you have... This is your medium shot. say so cowboy shots they're what I've heard I've heard a couple things I've heard that cowboy shots is so you can see the gun in the cowboy's holster so um, I guess it's a little bit below the the crotch but also, I've heard cowboy shots, too, can be kind of like where the, like hiding where the ankles are. Now, a rule of thumb for myself is I try really hard not to uh, have the frame crop at a, um, at a joint or at, like, clean, clean places where you could easily, you know... Um, Hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Let me let me see. Like, okay, if this was a head, like, if it's like right here, I wouldn't do it right at the nipples. I would do it just like a little bit below, or I'd do it a little bit above. It it comes back to the whole asymmetry of of, of something like, um, or or it comes like to you know like, don't um, create tangents. Kind of like if. Uh, um, I'll give an example a little later. I just want to get to, to doing some more. So anyways, and then, so this is our, our um, another cowboy. And then you have your full shot, which is like your head to toe. That's another way of calling it. Full shot. Head to toe. And then, uh, and then you have your wide shot. which could be usually a wide shot is to establish something. Or to, or, or to show scope. Wide shot is to show scope. So, any questions, just throw it into the comment section. Um, we will go into this tomorrow. Angle, we'll get into tomorrow. Today is scale. Um, a little conundrum that always throws me off is like, let's say if you do, if this is the moon... that's the moon would this be a close would this be a close-up of the moon would this be a medium shot of the moon would that be a uh, a wide angle shot of the moon it's it's so relative so scale is relative but specifically here, let me see Is that a little bit better? All right. Anyways, it's all relative. Scale is relative. Um, but what I would say is just, I would call it a single. 
or an insert of the moon. All right. I'm 15 minutes in this live stream. I'm feeling really good. So um, that is scale. Tomorrow you'll have a test on it. Anyways, um, let's get to drawing our angry eyes smiling. Oh, so if this is a close-up, an extreme... Close up would be something like this. You're you're really just capitalizing on that emotion. So that's our extreme close-up um, but let's get let's get a little bit more into this so an extreme close-up angry smiling eyes so what I like to do sometimes like when I'm thumbnailing I'll just go I'll, I'll do it like as quick as something like this But let's say they like the shot, the, the director, the cinematographer, everybody likes the shot. Then I'll go in and um, either copy and paste this. Put it on a new layer. Angle it in there. And then, and then I'll start drawing on top. Um, Sometimes I need to have certain proportions, so I'll just draw the whole head. For instance, I'll go like this. I know it's a three quarter view of the head, so I'll do something like that. And then going back to the proportions, it's like every third, one, two, three, like that and then let's knock it back and then from here I'll draw the bridge of the nose draw my, my nose right here I will be like right here. This is kind of like where the tear duct is. And then this part right here is it's like it's right in here. Draw like the eyeball, the eyeball, just so I know where it can be. And then So I always have trouble with this eyeball. Um, a trick that I, ha I, I find is that what I do is I take it from this eye, this corner of the eye right here, and draw like a line that comes, kind of like this little, a little arc, a little arc guideline. Like this to like this, and then I make it the apex of this arc to be where I think the middle or the midline 
where the midline of the face is. So let's say if this is the midline, and let's say here's the side of the face, I'll make the apex like right here to right here. So this is short, and this right here is long. And then, let's say here's the bottom part. You come up and around like right here. And then you find where this is right here. And then I like to go the opposite way. I learned this from Rad Seacrest. Uh, he does a, I think he does a school called Project City. But I did this, this it was way before he had his school. But anyways, so here you go, your eye is right there. So what happens is basically this eye, what it's doing is if this is the normal eye, you're basically taking it and bringing these, these two points closer together. So essentially you're squishing it. You're basically squishing this eye right here. You gotta remember that if it's not looking right, go back to your proportions. Like, it should be three eyes. One, two, three. And then, well, five eyes total. Um, but since it's, you know, three quarter, you're going to be missing one of these eyes over here. And then, um, and then once I have my proportion, then I go into my, uh, my expression. So, let's knock it back again. What time is it? Okay seven minutes so now what I like to do is use my camera and I usually like going like this and taking a photo of myself so so or I could go like this I can't let me see that's what I got that's one image of myself let's do another image of myself because I'm not sure if I like that nope let's try it again So I have these two images, they aren't the best, but um, I just, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to take a photo of, that I'm trying to find is like, what does it look like uh, for me smiling? Um, and then how do I bring that anger into it? Because that's, that's what I'm trying to look for. So. I know that right here. Oh, I also got to do one last one of a resting face. So what I know here, um, it's not a good resting face. Anyways, let's just go off the knowledge that I have because these aren't these photos aren't really working for me. But what I do know is that when you smile, your eyes lift up. Your the lower lid lifts up. So if this is my eye. I'll have that lower lid kind of lift up like that. And then another thing that I do, if the lower lid lifts up like that, I 
I'm also trying to get that anger in there. So, use mirrors. Mirrors really help when you are um, drawing. Um, also, exaggerate. At this point, like right here, like I'm gonna exaggerate like this. So this is probably like someone like enjoying like torturing somebody or something. Please don't do this at home. And then um, Because exaggeration really goes a, a long way. because it's like it's the cheek anyhow so let's see how I could do this here's my frame brow actually I want him to be looking down a little bit like this drawing those eyebrows in there because that immediately brings the emotion in and then when you're furrowing your brow like this there's that bottom apex that I'm looking for top apex right here apex apex and then let me draw those pupils in there like that and then let's draw that kind of smile. I don't know. Can can you do like an evil smile? I guess it'd be more like this. Like that, that's scary. So see, like I, I was already thinking, hey, this might be cool having it like this, where he's looking this way. But it's it's kind of more intense when I'm looking at the camera because I'm I'm connecting. Again, this is a, my preference. This is uh, the way I see it, my sensibilities. Um, but some people may think, hey, this is too confrontational. Let's um, let's have them look over to the side. start seeing some universal things like see look there's this little like letter Y right there that's happening so I'll throw that little letter Y in and what's all these lines are kind of coming in like this so let's throw those in do not be ashamed of using reference because eventually as you do it so many times you know it'll just become second nature and you won't need to do it you won't need to use it and then the nose usually flares like this yeah i'm very big on using yourself as reference um there was this one time I, uh, so I love this one artist named Fiona Staples. She does 
the drawings for Saga. Um, I saw her email on one of the comic books, and I was like, um, I was like, hey, you know, let me uh, let, let me hit her up. And uh, I I asked her, and she says, oh yeah, one of the things I use all the time is the the face uh, FaceTime or photo booth in, in Mac, and she does all of her expressions that way. And I'm like, that's genius. Well, I've been doing that, so that validates it. That's cool. And then Norman Rockwell, he's another person who uses photographs. So don't be ashamed. Now check this out. So I started drawing this face right here, but I'm not liking the composition. It's, it's like cropping right at the nose and it's giving all this forehead space. So coming back to the whole tangent idea of, of avoiding tangents, I'll go ahead and just erase all this right here. And I think I learned this in Marcos Mateus framed ink book is that you have the eyes up here, the nose right, like nose like right here. So you have this, you create this triangle like that. So if I were to do that here, you have this triangle right here. So actually I would do it maybe something more like this. And now the composition is a little bit better. Or it's a little bit more pleasing. That's if you want. But again, you might want to do it. But again, let's say if you do have that that face that like this, you know. Let's say you, you do have it like how, how I was not supposed to have it, but there was something up here. Like maybe there was a tattoo or something, you know, that's right here that you want to show off. Well, maybe if you add that, if you have it in this composition, it'll work better. So it all depends. It all depends on what you want to show in the story. Um, so after all this, grab all this stuff. And let's hide all of this and drop all this down and let me redraw let me redraw this extreme close up but this time I want to use this one so I've read in many books that you're supposed to start with your, the left eye first and then the right eye because that's the way we write. We write left to right. But for some reason, I like going from right to left. I don't know why.
so I'm trying to make him smile now. So I have the anger down, but I don't have that smile. Or, so see how I'm making that go this way? It goes, what is that, concave? Or I'm going to do the opposite. Convex. Again, since we're thinking of form, form goes around, but it'll be more of a, like an S shape. Well, let's take a look. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Here, I bring it up. Well, it's about the same. Hmm. Just gotta touch that um, that pupil. So there's that little letter Y, like that, and then these arches come in like this and then up. Uh, same thing here, let's find that middle apex right here, here's, we're looking for symmetry. Thing that I like doing is just if, if you don't like it do it again over and over and over but everyone has a sweet spot Let's see, where am I at? A little over. It's okay. Let's go back here. And you have to think <clears throat> about what serves the story. Why is he, why is this person like smiling devilishly?
Maybe he has like a trick up his sleeve or something. And then, once I get to about that, then I go over and try to find some reference. So let's go to Pinterest. Let's look for eyes. So I'm over here on Pinterest right now. And like these are some pretty cool looking eyes. And again, I don't copy the eyes, I'm just kind of using it as I love this guy right here, Grizz and Norm. Whatever, I'm not finding anything, so I'm just gonna choose this right here. So let's throw some opacity down. I'm going to change this to a red. And uh, let's see. I like the, uh, the smile. Anyways, let's just come back here. Let me, uh, I'll just ink what I got. And when I ink, I 
try not to go slow because if I go slow, it'll change the, uh, the vibe. immediacy funny whenever I ink stuff I feel as though the uh, the initial drawing always has a little bit more energy <clears throat> so so see I wasted my time inking it like that because I don't like it so sometimes I'll just stick with the uh, the rough like this and I will tone it
start with the background and I'll work my way to the foreground. That's, so I do the skin tone or another way of calling it is just the local color. I'll do the shadow, which um, I could do it with the. Where is this? The burn tool. And with the burn tool, I'll have the. I'll have it in. I will do the midtone. I like to use not a soft brush I like to use kind of more of a hard edge let's say the light is coming from I'll have the light coming this direction so let's go back here burn so if it's coming this way all of this will be in shadow. All of this will be in shadow. If this were an egghead, it will kind of go like this. All of this is in shadow. Just like that. All of this will be in shadow. Exposure a little bit more. Get into that little crevice right here. A lot of times I don't like inking stuff because just the energy is all in the uh, the rough. But also. We see things, humans, we see things, even animals, we see things in tone. So just adding tone to something can really um, make your image pop. So let's say like that's all I want to do. And then let's, now why don't we go to Dodge now. Take the soft away. Let's go to something like this. That looks pretty cool. Um, then afterwards, I'll just uh, find my blacks. Because blacks can be kind of scary sometimes because it's uh, it's so bold. But it's all about fucking it up. Don't worry about fucking it up. You could always fix it somehow. Oh, and then now I'm taking some of the... I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit.
always liked cross hatching.
Well, I went way over my uh, expected uh, live stream. Anyways, come check me out tomorrow. Hope you guys are learning stuff. Anything uh, you want me to draw, just you know, throw it up inside the chat. Talk to you guys later. Peace.